like to humbly request today's chief guest, Mr. Mohbil Hassan Chaudhry, MP, Honorable Deputy Minister, Ministry of Education, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh, to address the audience. Education bega began in prehistory as the adults trained the young people to get necessary techniques and skills to survive and live in society. From then on, the value of education has increased and nowadays it has reached the most formal and structured framework. Every government in the world is giving more importance to education, especially on higher education. Bangladesh, being a developed and fast-growing country, is greatly concerned about its education and we are paying attention. And our Honorable Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina, has put in an enormous emphasis on further development of education sector in all levels. I'm really happy to be here in this program and I feel proud to be with the future policymakers of education in Asia region. I really appreciate the activities and initiatives of AUPF in terms of creating a space for future leaders in the education sector. I believe they will create such a stage where the policymakers will come up with different effective policies to ensure better education in this region. My heartiest thanks go to Daffodils International University and especially to Dr. Mohammed Sabur Khan for making this event happen in Bangladesh. It is a challenging task to undertake and your organization have done it successfully. Congratulations. I have a written script. I don't want to go through that script. I just wanted to share some of my views in higher education with our distinguished guest here tonight. In this new era, where we are talking about fourth industrial revolution and artificial intelligence, etc., uh, 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 the uh, growth of the technology-led startup industry, etc. However way you define, are we going to stick to that traditional model of higher education where we, as the tuition providers, are we going to stick to that traditional model of higher education where we are asking students to come and to offer them what is most marketable as a typical product? Are we going to uh, run it as a typical business? And if we do that, are we going to survive and sustain in the face of the great changes that are coming in everywhere in this world? It is time for us to think and rethink and reinvent the entire higher education system, perhaps, because as you have already known, universities in the West, many of them who run expensive courses, post-graduation, graduate courses, etc., are now having to cut down their traditional tuition-led model, where you go to a top-class university, pay a huge amount of fees, obtain a certificate, and enter the job market. That traditional model, which had been here for, in this world, I mean, for years and years and years, is that going to continue in the new era? Is that going to be the model to follow in the, in the fourth industrial era that is coming? I don't know, I don't have the right answer. But we have to start thinking from now on. Because in this global village, Education, to some extent, is still a business of a kind. Where it is still seen in the manner that we all do. We provide tuition, you pay for the tuition, and the best come in and they get the best jobs that are available. The institutions that produce the best human resource are ranked and recognized. Therefore, they, are, they have the authority to charge the extortionate tuition fees that most of them do. I myself have attended a university which 
despite being a public university, were, is still modeled on the same traditional structure. Bring in overseas students, charge them a huge fees, give them a, what I call a status passport, and with that status passport, they go to uh, find employment or whatever they do. But my objection to that model is that when I attended my university, I'd rather disclose it, London School of Economics, they charge huge amount of fees from overseas students. It is essentially a business despite it calling itself a public university. In terms of equipping the students, undergraduate students, with the right sort of skills, whether they're actually doing the job or not, is gradually becoming irrelevant. We are, what we are doing, a lot of these prestigious universities, what they are doing is, they are giving status certificates to their students, instead of the competencies that they require to thrive in the job market or to enter the job market. I say this because I am myself, I consider, I don't call myself a victim of the system, but uh, to some extent, to be honest, I didn't feel the university which I attended really gave me that life skill. We are all doing almost the same. We are thriving to be the best in terms of status, in terms of ranking, in terms of our ability to sell better certificates, more prestigious ones with good MOUs between institutions, but is it really sustainable or are we doing justice to our beneficiary group, which are our students, who are availing these services and tuition at a very, you know, uh, extortion, education, higher education in most countries are quite expensive. If we are to do this, I don't think we are doing justice to our, if I am free to use the term, the client group. We are not really doing a good favor to them. Because we are not being flexible. We have to radically change the manner in which we provide tuition, I believe. And from private university perspective, I feel that this structure that we had always where we had a lot of faith in that you bring in the students, you give them, the re they are in residence, you give them tuition, you give them certification, and then they go, it's going to change. In this global world, in this 5G world, you are on the same competitive platform as Harvard University. Because in terms of technological ease, real-time education can be provided to anyone who are connected through the internet uh, wherever they are, irrespective of their background or their financial ability. So perhaps it is time for us to rethink higher education entirely. Perhaps higher education could look at uh, modular education providers such as Coursera, more and more universities are using these platforms, Udemy and other such digital platforms, and we could concentrate on not traditional students, but rather on everyone to commit to the idea of lifelong learning, because unless we are able to re-educate ourselves in this new era, we will become obsolete in terms of our ability to work. Work patterns are changing. Apparently they have, I was a law, a law graduate from my university, I started my legal profession. Apparently there is now a software which will get rid of many of the lawyers who do basic vetting of contracts. So contract vetting is now going to artificial intelligence led softwares and a lot of the lawyers will lose their job. Perhaps to law students or law graduates, we have to train them how to operate these softwares or design these softwares rather than just what the laws are. Laws are all in books. Governments are passing them. 
and implementing them, so laws will always be there. There's no point in actually teaching them the laws because laws are available to every lay person. Perhaps they could do something that is more competency-based and will make them more suitable for the job market that is coming. So it is for all of us to think, from policy-making point of view to those who see education as business, there's nothing wrong in seeing this as business because business means adding value. And if adding value costs, people pay, and that's a very good business model. Good business model for all of us. So perhaps we could rethink in the manner we want higher education to operate. Perhaps we don't need postgraduates or researchers or graduates. Perhaps we need more researchers. We could concentrate on research and assist uh, the thriving ecosystem that are developing around the digital uh, technology world. We could assist our uh, uh, students like that and move away from that very traditional scripted framework of tuition, fees, and graduation model. So I just wanted to raise this small point from my side today amongst all of you, before all of you. And with this request, I will end here. Please enjoy uh, the very nice uh, offering from this um, uh, uh, re uh, hotel. And uh, I thank the organizers for um, holding this event. And I hope success and I hope all of us will thrive in uh, whatever, uh, educa whichever education sector we are involved in and, um, and are, will be ready to take on the challenge of the new era. And uh, lastly, I just wanted to say, in this global world, there, is probably, there will probably be there will probably, um, the, the, the traditional hegemony that we have seen in Western universities will probably go. But they're catching up. They're doing a lot of works. They're doing a lot of marketing. They've created gimmicks such as uh, university rankings ran by a newspaper in the West. So it's going to be a tough fight. And in that tough fight, we are not too far. We have to compete with Western universities which, to my knowledge and to my, in my experience, aren't that greatly different. But it's just that they've created this image amongst our people in Asia and in other countries that they are the best. Not necessarily they are the best, but they're good at saying they're best. So uh, I hope AUPF will keep this in mind and make them more competitive, more reachable, accessible to the global student population. And from our policy point of view, I also uh, uh, would like to tell you that in this country we would like to open higher education for international competition where international participants will come in and we have to also compete with international providers and therefore that will lead to better quality in our higher education.